Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another Monday this and that video. And for those of you who are new, this is just a weekly vlog that I do covering many different topics, sometimes updating you on experiments, answering questions that have come in in the last week, and all kinds of stuff like that. A little different than my single topic videos, but it gives me a chance to give you updates that I can keep more current to the actual time that I'm shooting the video, rather than being like the rest of my videos that can be two, three, sometimes a whole month out by the time it finally publishes. So let's get to the topics of today. I got a lot to talk about. I woke up at three o'clock this morning remembering I still hadn't got the quince off our little tiny quince tree yet. So I went and picked them. I got four. I was pretty sure there was one more out there but uh, it's better than last year. Last year was none. Our tree is still very young. The first year we planted it, we got one quince, and then last year we got absolutely nothing on any of those trees. But then this year I, I did get some quince, and boy, they sure smell wonderful. And no, at this time I still don't know yet what I'm gonna do with them, especially since I only got four and one of them's really tiny. I could still make something up with them or I might just eat them. I'm one that's been known to eat lemons like the rest of the people in my family. Lemons with salt and when I was a kid, we had a quince tree just right outside our back door and I loved that. And I'd pick them and eat them fresh right from the tree. So I might just eat them, we'll see. Then one of the other big things I wanted to talk about is I finally track down. I've been meaning to do it for a while and I kept forgetting. When I was initially looking for silicone trays for my dehydrator racks, all I was finding were things that were flat and I wanted something with a lip on it because the whole purpose of it was to be able to get away from the plastic trays that come with the Nesco or that you can get to go with the Nesco and to also have something that I could use for liquid items. Now when it comes to all other items, you know, herbs and so on, anything like that, fruits and vegetables. I just used little cloth, just got some recycled cotton sheets and cut them up. These are kind of stained. They've been used many times for drying apples and all kinds of stuff. And I lay those on my trays and that's what I, I dry everything on. The cloth is excellent because it's a, a cotton fabric, it's all natural, it allows more air to, to follow through than something like a silicone tray and also catches any teeny tiny bits better than any of those little mesh plastic things you can put on your dehydrators, no matter what dehydrator you have. But for your liquids like dehydrating milk, eggs, even the pureed tomatoes and anything like that, you still gotta have something that's gonna hold all that liquid in and a cloth or those little mesh covers are not gonna do it. So silicone is excellent. It is an expense though. I don't like to try to talk people into buying things that they can't afford or maybe don't even need, but anything, if you can afford it and you're saving up money for food preservation, there are things that can make it a lot easier, and once you have them, they should last for a very long time. That's one thing I like about silicone, is it's a little safer than plastic. It's not gonna warp the way plastic does, because that was one of the issues I had with one of my plastic ones. I realized when I went to pour some milk on there, and all the milk went running out of the dehydrator, it was actually the tray. It wasn't that the dehydrator wasn't level, it's that the tray was warped and caused everything to run out. And so you're not gonna see that happen with your silicone. And it's just a little safer than plastic. And I, I think it could be a worth, if you can afford it, I think it would be a good investment. But if anyone has any ideas of other ways that don't require you having to invest in some silicone trays, what is your experience using cookie sheets in an oven or on a wood stove or something like that for dehydrating liquid items and how does that work for you and just share with us down below any other ideas that can help save people money because these were not cheap but to me they were worth it to finally invest in them and my plastic ones they're going in the trash i haven't actually tried them yet for the nesco because i did also recently since one of my nescos it was one of the ones i got at a garage sale the motor gave out on me this last summer and a lot of my trays, probably from my very first one I purchased 20, 25 years ago, you know, a lot of my trays are broken. One of the bases is broken. I thought, well, I'd like to have another because I like to have several dehydrators because so I can have at least three going at a time if I need to. So I went ahead and followed another uh, follower's recommendation of trying out the Kasori. I haven't been super interested in the Excalibur. I know people love it and I'm not trying to put it down, 
but one of my drawbacks was the price to be able to get one with stainless steel trays because that was one of the things that sold me on this one was the stainless steel trays that came with it but the mesh is very wide so you have to have something to go on top of it so when you're drying anything small i mean big things will be fine on that you know big slices of apples or whatever but i just used the same thing here i found some more of my cotton fabric and cut it to fit i like to have just a tad bit of overhang if i can and then I can put all my herbs, vegetables, whatever on here, grains, let's say you're soaking your grains and then you're wanting to dry them out. That's what I like about cloth is that it'll hold everything in, everything. Because even those mesh trays, like when I've dried calendula, it's okay when you first put it on there, but when it dries and then some, then you go to try to take them off, the little pieces fall through, even the finest mesh cloth holds it all in and I love that. So I did make some cloth for this. And by the way, I'll be doing a review on the Kasori. I haven't been asked to do this. I'm not affiliated with them at all. And I'm going to talk about why you may prefer a Nesco over the Kasori or even a Kasori over the Excalibur or you may prefer the Excalibur over any of these. So be watching for that. So if you still haven't invested in a dehydrator, an electric one, you know, there there's some things you might want to know. So anyway, I'll link to the silicone trays that I got down below. They also make them for the same company. It's called Bright Kitchen. They also make them for the Excalibur. So they have ones that fit the Nesco, ones that fit more to the Kasori, but they do not fill up the tray completely, but I'm totally fine with it. I would rather have those that are just a little bit smaller than the tray itself than not have them at all. Okay, now while I'm still on the topic of dehydrating, I want to talk about two other experiments that were not quite successes but not utter failures either that I tried after shooting last week's this and that video. If you were paying attention to last week's video, close attention, you would have noticed sitting right here on my counter a pint-sized jar with almonds in it that had been soaking. And that was so that I could make the almond milk and then try dehydrating the almond milk to see what kind of result I would get out of that. I was certain it was going to turn out just as good as dehydrating the whole dairy milk. It did dry up fine. I was able to get it to flake up and it all seemed like it was going to work out just as I thought until I put it in my little coffee grinder and processed it and it turned to paste. And so then I thought, well, it wasn't, it was still just a little bit loose. So I thought, well, let's see if adding a little bit of arrowroot starch to it will help loosen it up. Well, when I added the arrowroot starch and ran that grinder again, it made it even a thicker paste. So it was more like almond butter. It tasted good though. <laughs> it tasted really good. So I just ate it, but it wasn't powder. Now, my only purpose of doing that was to try it out. So just to see, because having a nut milk powder is nice if you're vegan or need to be dairy free, but you want to do something like make white chocolate. So you can't use powdered dairy milk. You're thinking powdered nut milk of some kind. You know, that's why I thought it would be great to try that. Now they do sell powdered nut milks, but they must do something special. Maybe they freeze dry it. Maybe that's the difference. Or there's other forms of drying, by the way, besides freeze drying and dehydrating. There's at least two other forms, such as this organic whole milk powder that somebody told me about that I wanted to give it a try. This was actually not a bad price for a 4.4 pound bag and you can get it through subscribe and save. So I figure why not give it a try? And I did try some, I just made a little glass of milk and I actually really liked the taste. I found it right on par with the Hoosier Hill and the Judy's, but the difference is, is this one is specifically labeled as organic. This one is also organic. But anyway, what I was gonna say is this one says spray dried. So whatever that means, maybe somebody can share some info on that. I haven't had a chance to look it up. But anyway, so there's different ways that things are dehydrated. So maybe when it comes to the nut milk, the same thing might apply. I, I really don't know. I don't know what they do that's different that other than maybe adding some other ingredients. I noticed when I bought the coconut milk powder, it did have an added ingredient that I wasn't super crazy about. It, it's not terrible, but it's one of those generally recognized as safe. Whatever it was, I don't remember. I just thought I would try it and make some peppermint bark out of it. And it turned out good. It, I didn't notice a difference in flavor. So anyway, if you're needing a, a dairy-free 
milk powder for something like that you can go ahead and look around just try to find something that doesn't have added ingredients if it's possible so anyway the next experiment was I was doing heavy cream. I keep heavy cream in the freezer, but here's the problem sometimes with freezing heavy cream is you can take it out when it thaws. It's like it turned to butter in the freezing process. Not always, but sometimes. So the one that I pulled out happened to be one of those that was, it was just like putting butter on the tray. And in that case, you know, because I was also wanting to try out the silicone and try out the kasori for that i did put it on the kasori tray and it was just really thick so i added a little bit of whole milk to it to kind of thin it out just like with the almond milk it dehydrated up really nice it came off of these without having to grease these it came off much easier than the milk i'd put on the plastic trays without greasing them up with a little coconut oil but the same thing happened when i went to powder it up it just turned to a paste and actually here it is right here it actually kind of looks like butter it's kind of dry it's drier than butter you can sort of crumble it a little bit it's kind of weird it just didn't turn out like a powder now you can buy heavy cream powder that is just heavy cream which is what i do i actually buy the hoosier heels and keep that in stock and i use it in gravies and stuff so i'll be using this up which by the way i had to taste it it tastes really good i'll just be using this the next time i make some kind of white sauce like making a fettuccine sauce or even the meatballs and gravy and just add it to that when i go to make it it should mix in just fine now though i don't plan on experimenting anymore with the heavy cream i do recommend trying it with fresh cream whether it be store-bought or from your own dairy animals to see if you get a better result because maybe part of the problem with mine was that i froze it first but i don't think that's the case i think like with the almond milk which i should also add i did make that almond milk especially rich so it's it was fattier than most of the nut milks that i typically will make so i believe it's the fat content that really made a difference as far as that goes Okay, and then one more thing about dehydrating while I'm still on the topic is that Patrick was helping a friend with her garage door and in payment they gave us some chanterelles that they had just harvested because it is chanterelle season here. And it was kind of late at night when we got them in and so I just thought let's just put them right on the dehydrator. So of course I tried out the story for that as well and I put my cloth covers on each rack and I think I had three or four trays of the mushrooms one thing that's great about mushrooms of any kind when you dehydrate them they can shrink down to pretty small so i was able to fit them all into a pint-sized jar so now we've got some chanterelle mushrooms to put up and that was pretty good and the kosori worked great now here's something i'm not used to is having a timer on my dehydrator i've always used nesco's that are just very simple and no timer i can adjust the temperature but i just know when to go unplug things or check things so at least the nice thing about the timer is helping me to keep track how long in hours it actually takes to dry different things rather than just giving people a guess so that will be one nice thing when i go to share that when people ask well how long does it take and i'm always i don't know i just check it and then take it off when it's ready all right let's move on to a couple more topics so a lot of you have been following me for a long time know that i make my own herbal shampoo and I've always made it out of my homemade soap to start with. So that's that's the soap I use in the shampoo. And I have two different videos. One goes back to the early when I first started my channel. And one is much newer that I did maybe two years ago or last year where I used copper in that as well. Some colloidal copper. That was just an added benefit that's not necessary. And I finally remembered, I've been meaning to do this for a while because I wanted to try out the Dr. Jacobs soap and I, I think this has been about a year-ish uh, so that I could find out how good it was and compare it to the Dr. Bronner's for those who for certain reasons were trying to get away from Dr. Bronner's and then found I actually like the Dr. Jacobs a lot better than the Dr. Bronner's and then I went ahead and asked them if they'd be willing to do an affiliate with me so I searched them out because I was really happy with their soaps. I initially found them on costco.com but they don't have as many options that you can get either directly from dr jacobs site 
which by the way, I always have a link down below where you can save a percentage by going through that link, but you can also get them on Amazon. Some of them are available on subscribe and save and you can save a little bit more. But if you order directly from Dr. Jacobs, you get enough, you can get free shipping and it's not too bad. The price I think ends up being a little less than Dr. Bronner's, but I like it better because it's got a higher viscosity and they have more scents to choose from. So anyway, getting back to the shampoo, I did some experimenting just shampooing my hair with just their soap to see how well it would work so that I would know when I went to do that video, which I'll link to down below because I shared all the many different ways you can use this soap to see how well it would work on my hair and I was very happy with it. So the next step was getting around to making some more of my herbal shampoo, but instead of using my own homemade bar soap in there, using the Dr. Jacobs soap in that. And of course it's easier because you don't have to dissolve it, you just gotta mix it in but I wanted to see how well it would work. Finally got that done. So I have a jar here of the shea butter, and this is all just homegrown herbs. And then I did one of the sandalwood because the shea butter and the sandalwood are my two favorites to wash my hair with. So the last time I washed my hair, I used the shea butter herbal shampoo. And then this morning I used the sandalwood herbal shampoo that I made. So I just made a big pot, divided it in half. So these are a little bit bigger. These are pickle jars I actually picked up at a garage sale for like 20, 50 cents a piece and it was worth it to me because they're great jars for doing vinegars and all kinds of stuff. And where your standard, your half gallon jars are 64 ounces, these hold better, these hold about 68 ounces. I divided the pot between the two jars and then I would say I put probably about two cups of the liquid soap, the shea, the sandalwood, and the shea butter into each one of the jars and then just blended it well. And then what I do is you just need a little bit of the soap anyway when you're going to wash anything. You don't need very much. It's, it's very concentrated. So even with that, with the two cups in here, what I do is I keep a small bottle of each of these in the shower. And then when I go to use it, I still do the same method where I just put, I just put a little bit more now in the bottle where I have a little eight ounce bottle. I put a pretty good size squirt of the shampoo into that bottle. Then I water it down even more. And that's all I need to wash my hair with. And what I'm finding is now mixing it with the herbal tea that I make and then using it that way, it's working even better on my hair and leaving it softer than using the soap alone. So I've been pretty happy with that. Now I recommend you go check out that video I did on Dr. Jacobs. So you can just check it out, see what you think about what I had to share. I really like the soap to the point that um, I'll probably keep using this for washing my hair with rather than using my homemade soap, though I love it. And I still wash my face with, I still make the homemade soap just for us, not for the store anymore. Um, it is nice having this liquid soap and it is a lot easier to mix and I love the scents. I love, I didn't think I would like the smell of shea butter because I don't usually, but I love the smell of this and I absolutely adore the smell of sandalwood. Both are also very good for your hair. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for the week and be watching for more information coming out next week and more updates and probably more experiments. Okay, well thanks for watching, take care and God bless.